Hey, 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 how you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome to Temple Talk Thursdays, where we come here every Thursday at 1230 Eastern Standard Time, and we have real talk. We have talk about our health, women's health. We have um, real conversations. We also have some special guests coming along, and we also have some um, learning, some growth uh how can I say it? Some growth projects, right? And so that's what we're gonna, we're doing here currently here at Restoration From Within. My name is Kat Pons. I am your restoration coach at Restoration From Within, and I work with women who want to go back to an overall healthy place for themselves personally, for their families, but most importantly for God. So that's what we do here. I was starting the timer to make sure that I'm mindful of your time. <laughs> um, so that's what we do here at Temple Talk Thursdays. We have real talk, we have some growth projects, and the one that we're currently on is the Watch Your Mouth Challenge. So I'm super, super excited. So um, God kind of hit the brakes in one section because we're coming from um, a great two great books. And, um, and one of the books is, uh, I was looking at the books, is Watch Your Mouth, from Tony Evans and also an awesome book is called um, Taming Your Mouth, 30 Days to Taming Your Mouth by Miss Deborah Smith Peggs. So those are the two books that got um, really kind of steered us to doing what we needed to do as far as this watching your mouth challenge. So he hit the brakes in um, Lord Over Your Lips and he wanted us to go a little bit more in depth so that we can know and understand the difference between who's Lord over our lips. And that's what we're gonna discuss today. But before we begin, and I would like for you to do the same. Please, 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 please share and tag a girlfriend. And I'm going to um, share as well here as we're talking. And um, and I also wanted to say thank you for all of you, all of you who are um, catching the watching now and catching the replay. Thank you so much. If this is your first time watching Temple Talk Thursdays, please let me know. Um, please put. Uh, in the comment section first time so that I can properly greet you and welcome you to the restoration movement. And if you're catching the replay, please um, put hashtag replay so that I can properly thank you and also show you some love as well for um, catching the replay. You could have done anything else, whether you're watching live right now or you're watching the replay. You could have been anywhere else, but you've decided to join me today for our Watch Your Mouth Challenge. So thank you so much. So um, while I'm sharing, please, by all means, share as well. I see I have a guest. Come on in, comment, say hello. How are you doing? Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to see if it allows me. Hey, Blondell, how beautiful. How are you doing? So um, while you guys are sharing, also just don't share. Um, please write in the comment section above why is it that you want to share. Like today's the Watch Your Mouth Challenge, right? So today we're gonna um, we're gonna delve into two areas to um, show us who's Lord over our lips, and that's going to be what we're gonna continue answering the questions that we did a quick survey last um, Thursday. So we're gonna continue to answer those questions. We talked about the retaliative tongue. We talked about the root of it last Thursday. And then the next question that we asked ourselves during our survey to determine who's Lord over our lips was, let me get my notes so that I can um, repeat it. It says, do you have the urge to eat a lot of candy or um, potato chips or drink a certain things when you're stressed out? So guess what we're going to talk about today? We're going to talk about emotional eating and the roots of it. And we're also going to answer the question, do you enjoy directly resisting anyone whose viewpoint is different from yours? And that's the argumentative tongue. And we're going to know, we're going to talk about the difference between those. Oh, Blondell said, I'm great. Thank you. So glad to be watching with you. Much needed. Yes, much needed for me too, Blondell. Trust me when I tell you that. Um, I also want to put that disclaimer out there. Please do not think that I am perfect and I've got it together. Um, I'm taking this journey right with you. This is something that God is, um, he has uh, brought to my attention and he wants me to strengthen and he wants me to mat mature in this area of my tongue. One of the revelations that I have received and I wanted to share with you and why he, um, he also asked me to take you on this um, live journey with me is because um, once you master your tongue, you become more mature in the walk that you have with Christ and also in your health walk. It's once you take care of this right here, it, it align everything else in your life. Trust me when I tell you that. And I mean, even, um, there's a whole, uh, uh, 
chapter on it in um, in the Bible about our tongue and how small it is, but how powerful it is. And even in the Proverbs section, it says that, you know, in our mouth, we have the power in our tongue or our mouth, this area right here, um, we have the power of life and death. So definitely, this is an area where once we master this right here, everything else will fall into place. And once we allow God to master this area and be Lord of this area, of our mouths, of our tongue, of what we say, then everything else will line itself up because there is great power in our tongue. And he made it so so that whatever we we have in our minds and in our hearts is going to come out of our mouths. That's why it's so important that whatever comes out of this vehicle, what whatever arrows that come out of this um out of this mouth are always to bring life or do your very best to bring life because I understand that we're not perfect. And that's why he's teaching us on how to watch our mouths. So thank you so much. So let me share here real quick and then we'll start into we'll start on our journey here in a second. I'm sharing it into the restoration movement group and if you want to join our group by all means please do so. And um, I also wanted to make an announcement. I'm so excited. Um, like I've already told you before, we have sold out here at Restoration from Within Camp from my books. Yay! I'm so excited. And I, I, um, I will be placing a bulk order soon. Um, however, if you want your own copy, please go to Amazon and you can get go to my listing page at Restoration uh, Restoring Your Temple Seven Steps to a Healthier You, so you can get your uh, you can get your copy. Also, major announcement: I'm gonna continue to say it in June. Yes, say June. My Fit Pray Slay girlfriends, they're getting ready for the next Warrior Arise conference for 2019. And part of their journey, they have chosen to um, they have chosen the rest, Restoring the Temple, Seven Steps to a Healthier You book to be their next book study for the month of June. I'm super excited. I'm humbled by it. And, uh, you know, God said it and now he's fulfilling his assignment with it. So if you want your copy, by all means, please, please, please go to Amazon.com. So you can get your copy and you can start the journey. I will be a guest speaker. I will be coming in and doing some lessons. And I also have, um, well, the team that is part of the Fit Pray Slay team, the lead team. They will, um, they also be teaching from my book as well. So I'm super excited about that. So please get your copy so you can join the book study at Fit Pray Slay. It's a um, Facebook group and it's a sister group to the Women Who War group from Remnant Warriors Global Incorporated. So thank you so much and I'm looking I'm so looking forward to um, us getting on this journey um, in the next, what, two weeks, a week from now? So please get your copy so you can get it soon. And if you already have your copy, thank you so much for allowing me to be part of your health journey. I do not take that lightly. I love you to life. And, um, and I would love for you to share your experience with me. If you go to the Amazon listing page and uh, write a review, I would love to read it. And it will be such a, a, a it, it will be nice for me to see what was your experience with it. And not just me, but for others to see it as well. Because, you know, that third party validations, I can say this book is the best thing since life's bread and, sh and scream it from the top of the mountains. But it's my book. So um, it might seem as biased, but really it's not my book. I just wrote it. I was just a vet. So, and those who have read it know that God is all up in this. He literally wrote it. I'm just, you know, just a vessel. Um, so I would love to see your reviews. Please, please go to the Amazon listing page and write a review for me. Tell me what was your experience from reading this page, um, reading this book and your takeaways. So thank you so much again. All right. Hey, Libby, how you doing, cousin? Thank y'all so much. All right. So I won't take up much of your time. My goal today is to talk about two areas. Um, last week we talked about the retaliative tongue. You know, we talked about being what. Um, what are some aspects? We asked some questions, and in those questions, we um, we were trying to determine those practical questions was to, to determine who's Lord over our lips. So the first question that we did was concerning the retaliative tongue, right? And the question says, when someone goes low, do you go dive in right with them? You know, if your clap back is strong, I mean like Superman strong or Superwoman strong, you know, that's there's roots to that. You know, we talked about that um, that's rooted in, in the spirit of offense and the and, and the aspects and, and the effects of that, of that retaliative tongue. So today we're going to talk about the second question and the third question. 
of that quick survey to see who's Lord over our lips. And the second question was, do you have the urge to eat sugary stuff or candy or potato chips, salty stuff, or even drink when you're stressed out? If you said um, yes to this, and I'm going to be the first one to say this, um, I, I have had some challenges with this area and that has been with soda soda is my kryptonite i don't drink uh, dark soda but i still drink ginger ale and sprite and so um and yes when i am stressed out or when i'm like really anxious or up and come or up and going and going and going and going or i'm tired i usually go for that ginger ale so that's my kryptonite and i'm here to tell you it is it is a challenge and even doing this study I continually ask myself, God, why is it that you have me doing this in public, you know? But I don't care, you know? Whatever it is, however he wants me to do it, I'm going to do it because I would rather, you know, have a, uh, my sisters with me and to be accountable to me and also to um, for us to build this momentum because at the end of the day, this goes back to when we started our fast in January. I promise you it is. You know, we ask God for momentum for fasting, you know, for momentum to, to take us to 2018 and for... Uh, the continuance of our lives, right? Guess what? This is it. But before we go out there and, and he catapults us to what we're supposed to do, guess what he needs to do? He needs to fix some things. He needs to align some things in our lives so that we could be up the best that we can be so that we can pour into others and not bleed into others. You know, there's a big difference when you're pouring into somebody or when you're bleeding into somebody. And bleeding is um, is a figure of speech as far as, you know, all, all the stuff that you're dealing with you know, when you share with others and, um, or, or when you try to help others, but you haven't helped yourself, you're not really helping them at all. You're actually just hindering them because you're not coming from a healthy place. And that's, and that's the honest truth. So, um, so we're going to talk about today, the emotional eating. Yes. Emotional eating. Hey, Tamara. Hey, Lula. How you doing? Thank you for joining me. So those who just joined us, thank you so much. We're going over again. We're going to part two of Who's Lord Over Your Lips. And we talked about emotional eating or emotional drinking. And so one of my uh, my uh, vices, my kryptonite is ginger ale. And um, as I was studying this, I was like, okay, God, help me out. You know, um, uh, this is really tough for me. And I was like, why do I go for it? Okay, these are the questions that I asked myself, right? I asked myself these two questions and I want to be, you know, verbatim with them. I said, how do you know you are emotional eating, right? And um, and and uh, what are some triggers, triggers of emotional eating? And why is it that I go for it? Why is it that I go for that, you know? So I, I'm going to answer these three questions for you. And let's start with the first one. Um, what is emotional eating? Emotional eating is, um, and it says when you go outside of eating outside of being hungry. So um, nine times out of 10, a lot of us do emotionally eat. And that goes to our second question. Our second question is what are some triggers to emotional eating? Emotional eating doesn't necessarily mean that you're upset. You know, it does, that is a trigger when you're sad or when you're anxious, which ones that I explained to you before. Um, but there are some other emotional triggers. When you're bored, that's an emotional trigger. Um, uh, when you are lonely, you're um, you're anxious. You are uh, you have fear. You're resentful or you're angry. So those those are some triggers as well. And there's also some triggers that happen during happy times as well. And those are when you are celebrating uh, an event or when you are happy. You know, those those are the things that can trigger emotional eating, not just bad moments or uh, moments that we counter to we encounter to be negative, but there's also emotional eating associated with happy feelings as well. So how do we get these feelings, right? Um some of them I can tell you from my experience, from my um Puerto Rican background, my culture, um we we wrap food around every event, whether it's somebody's dying, there's food in it when somebody or drinks or um alcoholic beverages you know whatever drinks it is you know there's there's somebody's dying there's a graduation somebody hit their you know somebody hit the lotto somebody <laughs> you know uh somebody got a new job somebody's birthday everything was usually wrapped around food or or events so a lot of everything that we do 
is based on the foods and it's cultural foods foods that if you look at the background and history of it have have a lot of unhealthy unhealthiness to it attached to it um and once i did the history of my background a lot of the food even for at the african-american culture a lot of those food was slave food that was given by the slave masters and i'm just you know i know i'm getting off topic but in order for you to know what you are battling against remember know your enemy and know, you have to get to the root of the problem of why is it that when i'm when i'm happy i want to go celebrate with food you know or why is it that when i'm stressed out i want to um go have a uh, soda or why is it that when um, I'm upset or anxious, I want to, you know, I want to chew on something? Or why is it that when I'm bored, I automatically think, you know, I associate it that I'm hungry, but don't take the time to to think it out or think it through and see if I'm I'm truly hungry or is it that I'm just bored? And I encounter that with my children. They think that, um, and and they just ate, mind you, they just ate, they just had a, a big, bre big breakfast, usually on the weekends, and then about 30, 40 minutes later, they're like, oh, I'm hungry. I'm like, no, you're not, you're bored. All right, you you know you have to think about it. Why is it why is it that you come into the refrigerator? Is it because you're really hungry? Do you have some hunger pangs going on? You know, do you have some indicators that is telling you that you're hungry, or you thought that you were hungry because you know you just bored? So those are the things that we have to ask ourselves. So that brings us to our third question, and our third question is why is it that I go for those things? You know, so we're about to go deep in here. Okay, we're gonna be, we're gonna be deep, and we're gonna reveal some things. Okay, why is it that I go there? You know why you go there? Comfort, security. That's why you go to these things. You go to comfort and security. When I am anxious or nervous, um, I usually um, me. Oh, another one. I'm going to put a pin right here. Another one is people there. Okay. A lot of people eat out of, they emotionally eat, but there are some people who don't eat when they're upset. Um, I, I tend, when I am upset, I'm being very transparent. When I'm upset, I tend to shut down in food. Yes, I drink beverages, beverages and I do smoothie drinks or whatnot, but I really shut, I, I lose total appetite, especially when I'm, um, I'm under a lot of stress. I tend to, and that's another aspect of emotional eating as well. You're not actually eating, but you lose total appetite of what you desire and that's not good at all either because once you are you overcome that emotion or once you um you're past that emotion once you get uh once you once you come back to reality right um you don't let those problems overwhelm you anymore and that's coming back to the uh comfort you um you tend to binge eat and that's not good for you either. So, so see, all these things are counterproductive. So going back to the third question, it's really a comfort issue. Do you, um, that brings comfort to you. So why does that bring comfort to you? That goes back to what I explained before. Um, was that something that, that was a learned behavior when you was coming up, you was growing up, when, um, when you was upset or something was happening? Um, you know, Did your parents give you can a piece of candy to make you feel better? Or when you was in school, did the teacher reward you with candy or with, um, with soda or, or whatever treat it was considered because you did a good job? That's why when you, you know, celebrate something, now you have to go celebrate with, to get something to eat. You see how those um, established triggers or established habits for us so that when we get older, we take those habits with us as we get older and we continue to have them or we share them with our children or our, or our young loved ones so that, so that becomes a generational curse. You see that? You see how that comes to a generational habit or, you know, in, in layman's terms for us kingdom believers, it becomes a generational curse. So, um, or when you are, um, or when you was, when you was depressed, I'm, I mean, I used to, listen, y'all, I used to be a lush, okay? I used to, I, I was not only the client, but I was the president. You hear me? So when um, when I realized that, um, thank you, God, for deliverance, when I realized that the reason why I used to drink was, it was because I, I had a lot of emotional issues going in, in on the inside of me. And because I didn't want to deal with those issues, and I wanted to... Um, feel free from from having to deal with those issues when they came up or rose up you know and i started drinking so guess what that made me that used to make me an angry drunk so i went from 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 bad to worse so 
it, it didn't even help me out. So at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is, is that we, um, we tend to find comfort in all the wrong things. And then those things have addictive um, ingredients in them. For instance, I talked about the sugar, right? And then the sugar, hey, Monique, how you doing? I love you. Um, uh, Monique says, so true, the cycle continues. Yes, and that's what I want to bring to light. One of the things that um, I, I have really been convicted about this ginger ale, and I know that might seem minute, However, I went from drinking Hennessy and Heineken and, red, and uh, the Red Label. Those were, those were my drinks, y'all. I used to be a heavy drink. When I tell you I was a heavy drinker, you know, I had two. I was in the club with one in one hand and one in the other. And I was ready to drink in Long Island. So I went from that to drinking soda, dark sodas, to now God is convicting me about. Because all I have done is I went from um, finding comfort in, in the alcoholic beverages, right? to finding comfort in the soda, the carbonated soda, the dark soda. So I said, okay, I, I haven't, but do you see my cycle? You see that? I went from alcohol, I went from soda, I went from ginger ale. Now I, now I went, you know, now he's telling me, okay, you, you, you have a cycle still going on. You still have not released that. You still have not find true comfort in me. You have not relied on me. You have not trusted me. You have to trust me. You have to find comfort in me and not find comfort in anything else. So that's the that's the real spiritual deep issue here is that I need to, in that area of my life, that every time that I face something or that I need something, I have to find, I have to stop trying to find that tangible because that's what we, we're looking for. We took the tangible comfort and rely and trust on God. Especially when it's um, when when these comfort uh, when these uh, emotional eating or drinking is associated with stressful behaviors or negative behaviors, we have to we have to we have to find comfort and trust in God. God says, "In all thy ways acknowledge me," and you know, "In all thy ways acknowledge me." In all thy ways acknowledge me. He says, seek the kingdom first and all his righteousness and everything else shall be added unto you. So if that's a guarantee and that's a promise, he's telling you an instruction and he's giving you the promise, the outcome, the reward of that. So why, why are we not, you know, trusting and believing? And I'm talking to myself. Why is it that I, I'm, I'm, I'm establishing a habit, but I haven't really released what I need to release and um, in that process, he's telling me, you still have that habit. You're just replacing it with something negative. So tip here, the, the health tip here is that we have to identify, the issue here is that we have to identify the emotion, right? And you can do this by um, keeping up with a health journal. Identify those, those, the times that you're eating, identify the emotion that's associated with it, and identify what you're eating. I'm telling you, this is, this is in my book. This is in my book. This is coaching that I do with people, especially when I do the grocery tours and I'm giving it to you. Identify those three things. And once you identify those three things and you see it in your, in your journal and you do it, try to do it for three days. And, and trust me when I tell you, you're going to see the, you're going to see the order of events. You're going to see the connection to it. And in that connection, you'll see why is it that you're doing it. And, and now once you see that you, um, you ask God, you go to God, because remember he says, go to him, seek him, seek his kingdom, seek him. And when you seek his kingdom, that's not just for spiritual things. That's for practical things as well, just as your health journey. So you need to seek him and seek his kingdom and ask him, okay, God, okay, what you want me to replace this with? What, what is a healthy habit? Help me because obviously I cannot help myself, you know, and remember that we're not, we're not supposed to do everything. We're not, you know, if we, if we do it on our own strength, it's not going to work out. Trust me. I've done that. It doesn't work out. I've done that with, when I was drinking alcohol. Okay. I switched to Pepsi. Then I went from that. I switched to ginger ale. Okay. Do you see that? Do you see that area? Do you see the area in which, you know, the retaliative tongue that we talked earlier? Is my clap back strong enough? Is, um, is, is that going to help out? No, he's telling us, and he's telling us, especially in the Watch Your Mouth book, he wants to be our speech writer. And he also wants to be a directive of what we eat so that we can take care of this temple. Because without this temple, we can no longer live the life that he has um, bestowed upon us. We're, we're dying prematurely by the words out of our mouth and by what we, in, what we ingest into our bodies. Whew, that is deep, y'all. I can't believe he just said that. 
But that's the Holy Spirit right there. So we are dying prematurely because of the words out of our mouth and what we are ingesting into our bodies. Why? Going back to what I told you, these items that we're finding comfort in, um, they have been, um, they're, they're not healthy for us. These, um, these items like sugar, sugar is, um, and I wrote, and I wrote that in, in my book. We talk about sugar. We talk about sugar in my book. And in, in the book, I talk about how sugar is part of the opioid family. That's why you got that super high and you got energized and you, you know, you see your kids running around, running around, and then they crash. Exactly. It's part of the opioid family. And when you, and when you're, um, when your, your body tries to filter that, it can't filter it as quick as, as, as we should. We think it is because it doesn't, first off, it's not, it's, it's unknown to our bodies and it tries to filter it. And, and because it can't filter it as much as we take it into our bodies, it turns into fat. And that's where we see, you know, the issues with weight management. So, I mean, that's just one of, of the items or ingredients that we find in these processed foods that we're putting into our bodies. I mean, and, and I'm telling you, I'm, when I tell you from the bottom of my heart, I'm, when I tell you we're about to close this in prayer and repent and do better, yes, this Watch Your Mouth Challenge is not just for me to come up here and talk to y'all and say, hey, this is what you need to do and this is what you don't need to do. No, we're at this together. I need for you to survive. I need for us to be accountable to each other so that we can walk into our purpose and destiny so that when God is done, make you know, cleaning us up and, and aligning us up to what he wants us to do. And he throws us out and he propels us and catapults us for the momentum that we prayed for. I want us to be completely ready. I don't want no room from the enemy to come in and try to take us and try to take us out. And the only way that we can do that is by going back to God's original plan for our lives by literally telling God, this is all you, this is all my mouth, my ears, my, my ears, my ears, my eyes, my body, my stomach, whatever I put in my mouth, whatever comes out of my mouth, it's all you. It has to be all you. Help me, Father, because obviously I cannot do this by myself. And he never meant for us to do any of this by ourselves. That's why he left the Holy Spirit here on earth when he ascended up on heaven. I'm telling you. Okay, you don't believe me? All right, Genesis. What was the issue? What was the whole story about? How did, how did the enemy come in in, in, the, in Genesis? The Genesis, God created the word, the world, the heaven and earth, the, you know, the seas, the waters, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days, and us. How did he create it? Our mouths, right? Right? Don't believe me? You can go to Genesis. Our mouths. He said, let there be. Let there be light. Let there be whatever, right? And then he, he made it up. He made us. I mean, he even breathed through our nostrils. He breathed, he breathed through our nostrils. So what did he utilize? He utilized his mouth. What did the enemy do when he came slithering in into the garden of Eden? He used his mouth. He said, did not God say this? Well, if he said that he used his mouth and used his version of the word of God. And what did he use? He used something to eat. So that goes back to what the Holy Spirit just gave us revelation to. We're dying prematurely, just like Adam and Eve died prematurely. And Jesus had to come in as the second Adam on this earth to, to bring us back and give us the keys to authority by what we ingest in our mouths and what we what comes out of the words that come out of our mouths. I know this is deep today. I know. I wasn't expecting it to be this deep either. But I just wanted to just just really to let just join me in this challenge. I'm telling you, what one thing that God keeps telling me is that once you allow me to be the speech writer of your mouth, allow me to help you 
in restoring your temple and completely returning back to me because it's a journey. This is not, I, I want you to, let me put that disclaimer out there too. This is not something that we're going to do overnight. You know, this is a journey. However, a sign of maturity is that when we use our mouth for life, when we mature in Christ, that's, that's what I'm, that's my, that's my goal here is to mature in Christ so that when I go to heaven, I can say I left here empty. And that's what I want for you guys to also. I want for all of us to return back to God's original plan for our lives so that we can renew our minds, we can restore um, our bodies, and renew our, our spirits. That's what we, I want to do. That's my heart desire. Oh, Blondell. Hey, Harold. How you doing? Thank you for joining us. So ultimately, are you up for the challenge? Are you up for the challenge? And I hope you are. I really do. I want you to take this challenge with me. I don't understand why he has me still on this chapter. I know y'all probably, those who are following me and catching the replay. Hey, thank you for all those who are watching now. My name is Kat Pons. I'm with Restoration From Within, and we're talking about um, Watch Your Mouth Challenge. And today we talked about emotional eating and how it affects us and the spiritual and um, and the physical implications that it has when we do not allow God to be Lord over our lips, over the things that we ingest in our bodies and over the words that come out of our mouths. So today, I'm asking you again, Chica, are you up for the challenge? Are you up for the challenge to allow God to be Lord over your lips, to be the speech writer and the Holy Spirit to guide you in what it is that you need to do to return to, back to God's original plan? I'm super excited for what God is doing. I promise you I was going to do more than this today, but I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is really taking over. My BFF is really taking over. So thank you so much for joining me. I would like to close this in prayer today. Please um, allow me the opportunity. I want to use these um, uh, biblical affirmations and pray. So thank you so much, Father God, for this great opportunity that you've allowed my chicas, the ones who are here live, and also the, the ones who are going to catch the replay, Father God. Um, thank you so much for allowing us to come together, to break bread together, to learn more of you and to mature in you, Father God. Lord, please forgive us of, of not allowing you to be Lord over our lips. Please forgive us of trying to find comfort in other areas, in food, in, um, in, in beverages, and even in people and other, in other things, even um, even shopping. I've been there as well, Father God, and finding comfort and therapy in those things when we should be finding comfort and trust and, and love in you, Father God. Help us to return back to your original plan for our lives, Father God. Help us to renew our minds. Help us to renew our spirit and to restore our bodies back to your original plan, Father God, because at the end of the day, we just want to hear, well done, that good and faithful servant. We want to use our mouths to construct and not to destroy, Father God. We want to use our mouths to um, bring life to our to our personal lives and to bring life to those around us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we repent for every word, thought, and deed that we have done that has not been according to your word and will for our lives. And we just thank you and we come back to you and we, we, we choose to seek you first and your kingdom and your righteousness, Father God. And we know that everything shall be added unto us. So we thank you so much, Father God. Continue to give us strength to do your will, Father God. Holy Spirit, come in. We're ready to learn. We're ready to take upon this challenge so that we can come back to you and be restored and renewed from within. Brittle our mouths, please. Please, Father God, brittle our, brittle our mouths so that you can control our lives. It is in your mighty name we ask and pray all these things. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much, chicas. If you want to join our restoration community, please go to restorationfromwithin.com and you can join our community and you'll get um, a free Renew and Restore Manifesto so with 10 steps. 10 steps to renew and restore your, your body from within today. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, but today. And you can also join our restoration movement group at hashtag restoration movement. You can look it up in the search area in the Facebook uh, page, Facebook group page or whatever you want to look for it in the Facebook search area. Thank you so much for joining me. I love y'all to life and y'all have an awesome, awesome, amazing day. Thank you, Demita. Thank you, Monique. Thank you, Harold. Thank you, Blondell, Lula, Tamara, all of y'all who watched the live and all of you who watching the replay. I love y'all to life. And remember to share the gift of health from Restoring From Within.